Hello everyone, it's Maive. Welcome back to my channel for another Halloween tutorial. Today we'll be making the third finger in my monster finger collection, the vampire finger. I'll leave links to some materials in the description. To sculpt this finger I'm using Cernit Doll Polymer Clay but you can use any other brand in a flesh tone colour. I rolled the clay into a snake keeping it thinner at one end. Then I marked the joints and made the areas in between much thinner so that the joints stood out. For this I like to use this tool that looks a bit like a hoof to push the clay in, still keeping the shape. Then I switch between ball tools and my fingers until I get a shape I like. To make the nail I rolled out a small sheet of clay and cut out the shape. Then I made lots of ridges on it to make it look old and thick and to shape it I placed it on a metal handle then baked it for 15 minutes at 110 degrees celsius. To bond the baked nail to the finger I used a little Fimo liquid and after pressing the nail into the clay I added more skin around it. To create all the folds and wrinkles on the skin I used a needle tool First to make a few here and there and then to go deeper into the clay and make the skin appear thicker. Then I like to use a pointy tool to make all the details and make the skin appear drier. To add general texture I like to use a toothbrush and the more you do this the drier the skin looks and then I like to go back in, take my time and work on all the details. Next I began to sculpt the bone without adding clay, just hollowing out and shaping the clay I had available. Then I cut out some flesh so you could see the bone. To texture the bone I used a pointy tool to create vertical lines on it and to texture the flesh I used the same tool in a stippling or poking motion, a bit like when I texture the grass or moss on my polymer clay houses. Then you want to make the bone look porous by poking lots of tiny holes and you can use a pointy tool and a toothbrush to achieve this. And don't neglect the edges of the skin, just roughen them up a bit so they don't look unharmed when they clearly are. I added the last few wrinkles to make my finger look super old and baked it for 15 minutes at 110 degrees celsius. Once cool I spread Fimo liquid on the back so I could add more clay and sculpt the pads. I like to keep the clay a bit thinner at the joints so that the pads look a bit more fleshy. After blending the clay I finished making the bone and then I moved on to making more wrinkles, trying to match some of them with those on the front. I added a little texture with a toothbrush but only where the raw clay meets the baked clay and used my own fingerprints for a bit more realistic texture in an uneven way then baked the finger for 30 minutes. 
Once cool, I used a wash of red acrylic paint on the bone and the same colour without mixing it with water on the flesh. I used the same colour on the edges of the skin to make it look sore. Next I used a dark bluish grey to create shadows and the illusion of coagulated blood under the skin. But here's when it all went downhill for me. I got too excited and I applied a wash of it all over thinking I would love it but not quite because when I applied the white I ended up with a grey I did not like. While that paint was drying, I painted the nail and then I just carried on applying that shadow colour that I ended up removing. Somebody just stopped me! So then I applied the white and I realised that this wasn't going to work for me. It just looked like stone and maybe it looks better on camera than it did in real life. But it wasn't what I had intended so I put the finger in a bowl of water and using a brush I removed the paint that I could remove trying not to touch the nail. I shaded the nail black and stained it with the same red colour because my vampire doesn't wash his hands after a meal. So after removing the majority of the grey or white colour, I went back over with a wash of warm brown and it finally began to look like the monster I had in mind. Of course this is not the only way to make a vampire finger, or the only one I thought of, but I wanted at least to start with a less stereotypical one and make one that felt more monster-like than human. Just like it's not fair to put all humans in the same bag, it wouldn't be fair with vampires either. So after adding the brown I added more red to create shadows or dry blood and lastly I filed the nail pointier and painted it again. Then I glazed the finger with matte varnish to protect the paint. If you liked this tutorial and would love to see more Halloween stuff, give this video a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, hello I'm Maive, I make videos like this every week, so go ahead and subscribe and click on the bell button so you never ever miss any of my uploads. Thank you all so much for watching, have a crafty weekend and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Ciao ciao! Love is a dangerous thing Hearts can be shattered to pieces Joy can quickly turn to sorrow